Hey everyone, and welcome to this Photoshop tips and tricks tutorial. Today, we're diving into some hidden gems and clever tricks to boost your editing skills and save you time. So, grab your mouse, open Photoshop, and let's get started. If we want to create a realistic blur and focus effect in a specific area, we use the Tilt Shift Blur. However, Tilt Shift Blur is not always able to deliver realistic blur and bokeh effects. Therefore, instead of using Tilt Shift Blur, we will use Lens Blur. Go to Filter menu, Blur, and then Lens Blur. As we can see that Lens Blur gives us a nice natural blur with bokeh effect, but it applies to the entire image. We cannot define the focused area and blur amount according to distance. In order to fix this problem, we'll need to create a depth map. So I'm cancelling this for now, and let's create a depth map. Select the background layer, and go to the channel. Now, click the Create New Channel icon at the bottom of the panel. Now, select a gradient tool. Make sure that your foreground and background colors are set to black and white. Click and drag a linear gradient from bottom to top. This depth map defines the blur intensity. Name the new channel to Depth Map. Once we have the depth map ready, click on the RGB channel to switch back to the main image layer. Let's apply a lens blur again. Go to Filter, Blur, and Lens Blur. Maybe we can increase the radius for now to get a more intense result. Now let's move on to the next important step. In the Lens Blur options, choose Depth Map as the source and select your created depth map. Let's adjust the blur radius to control the intensity of the blur. Now comes the magic. Click on the image preview to set the focus point. You can adjust the blur distance slider. This slider allows you to pinpoint the exact area you want to remain sharp. By changing the shape to an octagon and increasing the blade curvature, you'll get a smooth circle bokeh. Experiment with different settings, brightness and threshold to achieve the desired level of realism in your lens blur effect. You can choose preview quality between faster and more accurate preview modes. The more accurate preview takes longer to render but provides a more precise representation of the final result. To make an advanced lightning effect, the first thing we need to do is create a black background using the Paint Bucket tool, which we'll call Black Background. I will also create another layer and fill it with black. Give it the name Thunder. With the Thunder layer selected, go to the Filter menu, Render, and then Difference Clouds. This generates random cloud patterns. To get a more complex pattern, we'll apply Difference Clouds filter again. Now, we need to invert this pattern. To invert, simply go to the Image menu, Adjustment, and then Invert. Let's give our lighting patterns a color. Select the Thunder layer and add the Hue and Saturation Adjustment layer. Make sure the Colorize option is checked. To boost the vibrancy, increase the saturation to 100%. The Hue slider determines the overall color of our lightning effect. I will go with the blue color. Now, select the Thunder layer and change the blending mode to Color Dodge. As a result, the Thunder layer will become invisible because there is nothing below it but only the black background. In order to see our lightning effect, we must paint something bright color between these two layers. Let's create a new layer and grab the brush tool. Foreground color should be white. Decrease the hardness down to 0%. Flow 1% and opacity around 4 to 6%. This is where the magic happens. Paint gradually on the areas where you want lightning effect to appear. Nice, but there are pixelated white strokes around the edges. We can easily fix this problem. Just select the thunder layer and go to the filter menu. Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Gradually increase the blur radius until the white edges disappear. In this case, 0.4 pixels is fine. This is how you can create a lightening effect. Just don't stop there. Experiment with different brush size, opacity, and flow. This thunder effect can also be applied to text layer. Let's delete this layer. Grab the Type tool and create your text on the canvas. With your text layer selected, go to the Layer Styles and click on Outer Glow. Reduces the opacity to 
By increasing the size, the lightning effect becomes wider. Adjust the range for a specific look. Don't be afraid to experiment with different combinations of settings. Try using different contour. Once you are satisfied, click OK. You can edit and replace your text at any time, change the size and place it wherever you like. Now, let's learn the quick and easy dodge and burn trick. Select the model's image layer first. Then, go to Adjustment Layer and select Levels. Click the Layer Mask thumbnail to make it active. Go to the Image menu and choose Apply Image. Now, set your channel to RGB, Blending, Multiply, Opacity, 100% and make sure that Invert is not selected. Then click OK. Change the Blending Mode to Luminosity. Now, go to Level Adjustment Properties and make the bright area more brighter and the dark area more darker. With these quick steps, you can now effectively dodge and burn your photos. If you want this dodge and burn effect only on the skin areas, simply select the layer mask, then use the brush tool to paint black within the excess areas. This method is perfect for beginners or anyone who wants to add subtle enhancements to their photos without spending hours on complex edits. Let's learn how to create a cool and dramatic effect by blending text with smoke. Select the text tool and type your text and position it where you want it within the smoke background. Let's make it bigger. To make this text pop and stand out from the background, I'm going to add a drop shadow. Click the FX button and choose Drop Shadow. Increase the opacity of the drop shadow, also increase the size. Then add a bevel and emboss to give your text depth and thickness. Increase the size and depth of the bevel and emboss. Also, a little soften. Now comes the fun part. Go to the blending options. Now, if we go to the underlying layer, you can move this slider by clicking and dragging it. These sliders control how the text layer blends based on the brightness of the background. You can hold Alt or Option while adjusting the sliders to split them in half. This creates a smoother transition where the text meets the smoke. Once you are satisfied with the result, click OK. This is how you blend text with the smoke background. This Photoshop trick shows you how to isolate the skin tone and red colour in your image. So let's begin by clicking on the New Adjustment Layer icon and select Channel Mixer. Now, in the Properties panel, click on the Preset drop-down menu, then select Black and White Infrared RGB. To see the final result, simply change the blend mode of the Channel Mixer layer from Normal to Lighten. That's it! You've successfully isolated the skin tone and red colour in your image using the Channel Mixer. This technique works best with images containing vibrant red colours. I think that's it for today. These five tips and tricks are just a starting point. Remember, Photoshop is a vast playground, so keep exploring, experiment and have fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips and tricks and leave a comment below sharing your favourite Photoshop hacks.